Episode two of the VIP commission series. And today I'll be painting this and giving it away to one of our viewers. Now I've never painted a bust before and I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty intimidated by it. I already know that this is going to expose some of the painting flaws that I have in my game, but I'm getting ahead of myself. How about instead, I back it up a few steps and tell you a little about the VIP painting commission series and how if it interests you, you can come be a part of it. In the Flashing Badger Discord, we have a painting competition that runs every second month. And the way it works is you get to pick a project from your backlog pile of shame and you have an entire month to build and paint it. When you finish your challenge within the month, your name goes in the hat with all of the others and then a winner is randomly selected. That winner has the joy of picking something and I'll paint it for them. That's right, I'll buy, paint and post the model to you as your own cool little memento Flashing Badger Painting Commission. But why? What's the catch? For me, I'm pretty lucky that I've hit a point where I own a few huge painted armies and I'm running out of space for new ones. This gives me an opportunity to paint something different and in this case, something outside my comfort zone and hopefully build some skills. And the main reason is it's a fun way to say thanks to the people that are supporting me by watching these videos and hanging out in the Discord. It's a community of individuals who encourage one another with their hobby. It's a range of different game systems, dioramas and art. If it sounds like something you would be interested in, I'll add some info at the end to lure you across. Hold up, have I done the intro thing yet? Go. Last month, Epic Art 40K was our winner and he set me the challenge of painting this bust of Horace Lupercal from Warhammer. You can find this same piece online if you'd like to paint along. Mine was printed by Mark and his amazing team at Proxy Wargaming in Australia. Not only do they offer a high quality printing service, but there you will find a rich assortment of models that you can sub in to your favourite game systems. There are 28mm and 10mm sci-fi and fantasy models, there's fantasy football teams and much more. There's a link in the video description to take you there and thanks again Mark for printing this bad boy. As I said, I've never painted a bust before and because I'm a standard middle of the road painter, I really enjoy 28mm scale. With the models that small at arm's length on the tabletop, they look fantastic and it's not until you pick one up really close and inspect it that you go, wait a second, this guy can't paint at all. On a display bust like Horace here, there's nowhere to hide. People want to look closely and he's a much larger scale. I've been researching Horace to get an idea of how I'd like to paint him. I mean, researching how he looks, not who he is. I know who you are, Horace. And I know what you did. I've seen models of the War Master painted in a peaceful Lunar Wolf style with the bright, clean white, and I've seen versions where the armour is black and he appears heavily corrupted by the forces of chaos. I think I want to try and capture that transition, where the dark thoughts are beginning to manifest in Horus, and those closest to him will be picking up on those changes. His armour would be closer in appearance to the Sons of Horus scheme with the darker bluey green mixes and decorated with a bright gold trim. Don't worry, you don't need to know who Horus is or what he's known for coming into this video. There are over 60 novels detailing the story of the Horus heresy, and guess how many I've read? None, but I did listen to a couple on audiobook, I'm pretty sure. I'll give you a very quick snapshot so that you understand why he's a character notable enough to have his own statue to paint and why I'm painting him in a particular way for this video. Warhammer 40,000 is set roughly in the year 40,000. Story checks out. It captures mankind's continuous conflict against all manner of Xenos species as well as against themselves. Traversing space is achieved by travelling through rifts that are known as the warp. Inside the warp, time makes no sense. You can travel incomprehensible distances without that much time passing. But the warp is also home to the Chaos Gods. Being exposed to chaos can change a man. Some 10,000 years prior to these current events, in the year 30,000, the Emperor of Mankind had created 20 super soldiers known as Primarchs, who would lead his forces. 
Horace was the first of these Primarchs, who would go on to become the War Master for the Imperium of Man, a position created to effectively grant Horace authority over the remaining Primarchs. Fast forward a whole bunch of events that you are welcome to read up on, Horus here will be corrupted by the forces of chaos and perform the ultimate act of heresy when he turned against his father, the Emperor. So bear that in mind today as I paint the model. I'd like Horus to appear regal with his impressive ornate armour and the pelt of a mighty beast across his shoulders, but I want his face to tell a different story. I'd like to have him appear villainous, with a chaotic glow to his eyes and from within the armour shining up across his expression. Speaking of looking regal and ornate, get a load of these Patreon members. Patrons, if you will. One dollar a month and you will get behind the scenes exclusive look at our content, as well as a whole lot of attention from me and the occasional shout out. Like Neil here, who has started his own custom Space Marines chapter called the Krakens. Cracking some Xenos skulls, am I right? I should probably talk a little about painting my model as I go. I'll start with Horace's head. I'm not great at painting natural faces, and then the idea of also having a red glow shining upon it probably explains why I've left this part towards the end. Now this is where I confided in Blacksword that I wasn't too confident about this step in the painting process, and he recommended to me a couple of different tutorials from Feelin's Miniatures, where he paints a red chaotic glow to a really high standard on an abandoned model. I'll add a link to that video as well as his socials so that you can check them out and get some more detail on the process. To help me feel special, I've picked out a couple of new AK paints, but for the most part, these will be color matches of what I already have. But I did pick out a fluoro orange, which will be my secret weapon to help the glow pop out. I figured that if I started his face with skin tones, then the ominous burnt colors wouldn't be as foreboding. So I've instead based him with these darker reds that will act as shadows and recess colors for later. His head will be angled inside the armor to look towards the left of screen. And this is a sweet opportunity to have the right side of his face exposed to more of the light shining from within the armor and the left side with more natural skin tones. The duality of man, two faces. Two face? Horus Lupercal. Can we trust him? I mean, we can't. The skin tones are more natural, but still have a little extra red mixed in and a dark. It's quite a cartoony look with the obvious color shifts, but I enjoy that look. So I also need to be mindful of the time I have available for each project. And with the patient glazes for a smoother transition, I could find myself here for over a week. No doubt there's a more natural way to paint these eyes with it still looking ominous, but I'm continuing with the haunting glow idea. Kicking off with a base of white, and once dry, I'm using a fluoro yellow over the top. I reintroduce white to the center of the eyes, and then I shift my focus to a basic glow effect around the eye on the skin. A nice bright yellow as a glaze in a couple of layers, and then going even brighter again. He's done, but I forgot about that statue stand thing that he sits atop. Okay, I'm gonna try a marble look for this, and if I don't get it right, I'll make sure that I point you in the direction of someone who does. Take a baby wipe. I know you have one because most of us are parents just looking for a little hobby quiet time, am I right? <sighs> Unfold and throw that bad boy off to the side so that it dries out. A couple of different greeny blues are going down first through the airbrush and if you're thinking, hold up, the marble should be white, don't fear, we are just working in reverse. Once they are down, I'm pulling apart the baby wipe to create these big holes. Stretch that across your model and tape it down so that it remains still. Greys and whites through the airbrush over the top and once dry, I'm pulling the wipe away some gloss over the top to give this a nice shine and I think that it will work well as a stand. I know I haven't nailed the marble effect because the green areas should be thinner veins so I'll include a link below to a video guide from Rob Paints Models that you can follow along. 
Horace Lupercal is nearing completion, so let's take a look at each of our entrance competition models and let it be the final inspiration and kick that you needed to come and hang in our Discord as you discover that we are a wide range of beginner, intermediate and pro painters in here and each are eager to learn and share their skills. Some of our Discord community have their own public social media where they post their work in the hobby community, so you can also jump across there and show them some love. I guarantee you will make their day if you let them know that you discovered them here and if you encourage them on their journey. If you're watching this and thinking that this community is for you and that you'd love to show off your models in one of these videos, well, then click the Discord link in the video description, jump in, introduce yourself and tell me what's on your hobby desk this week. Now I've deliberately stalled you there while I set up the fancy lights, camera and turntable. So now it's time to check out the completed bust of Horace Lupercal. This was a large and daunting model to paint. Standing proudly at two and a half Tim Tams in height, but he's now wrapped, packed with an assortment of snacks and cursed dice, and he's been sent to the opposite side of the globe. Epic 40K, mate, I hope you love it, and thank you so much for getting me to step outside my comfort zone and paint the model. Whenever you make it this far into the video, you are treated to some behind the scenes insight into what is next for the channel. I've been absolutely spoiled by Warlord Games with a whole host of tanks for their new game Akton Panzer and I was thinking I could crack out the Fnatic paints and batch paint them all up in a video. Then maybe I'll even lure Gordon across to roll some dice and see what the game's like. I'm also eager to continue my Blood Angels painting journey by bringing the force up to 1000 points by adding a couple of different units. I have a really cool idea for another Judge Dread diorama that will take place in an urban setting. And of course, there'll be another winner from our painting competition and they'll be picking something for me to paint for them. Let me know from those video ideas what takes your fancy and I will see you there. But until then, I've been Mike, you've been awesome, and Horace has been looking over my shoulder since I hit record. What are you doing, Horace? Horace, no! So dumb. Horace Lupercal. Can we trust him? A completed bust of Horace Lupercal. Lupercal, brother. Brother. Brother Lupercal. Lupercal. Lupercal, brother. Brother. Sorry.